Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in a Michigan courtroom where a softard attempts to go pro se at a uh, pre-trial hearing uh, to try to argue his point. But he ends up, uh, well, I won't ruin it for you. It's a good example of what it would be like for a sovereign citizen to the defend themselves in a courtroom. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. What's your name, sir? Raymond Jarrell. Okay, come on, Mr. Ray. I'm going to have you stand right here in front of this seat, okay? Calling case 2359278, people of the state of Michigan versus Raymond Terrell Blandon. Defendant is charged in count one. Count one weapons carrying on sale. Yes, for the record, please. Change the rules for the people, P855 to zero. And it looks like the defendant has not been assigned an attorney. What's your name for the record, sir? Raymond Terrell. It's Raymond Terrell. So it looks like you got Raymond Terrell. Terrell is your last name? No, it's not. What's your last name? Uh, you have to be the name on my birth certificate. Name on my birth certificate is Raymond Terrell Blandon. But it would be wrong for me to use that name. That name is copyrighted by me. So I could not possibly use that name. Yeah, uh, yeah. Clearly, you don't know anything about copyright, right there, dude. Because names can't exactly be copyrighted since they're so. But please carry on, you gibbering idiot, and give us some more insight on your intelligence level. Copyrighted by the Queen. Yes. Don't have my queen. Queen or whoever, but it's copyrighted is owned by someone else. I don't own my name. In any event, this matter is scheduled for preliminary examination. Sir, you don't have an attorney present here. The court wishes to assign you an attorney. Uh, I will deny it. I don't want it. Why not? I don't want an attorney. I don't need an attorney. Think you're capable of representing yourself? Yes, I am. Are you an attorney? No, I'm not an attorney. How far did you go on school? I went far enough. How far is that? That's 12th grade. Graduated? No, I did not. I can read, write, and I understand proper English. So, uh, All right, let me make sure that you understand me. Just because you can read and write doesn't make you a good lawyer. I mean, I just wonder what your reading level is, skill is at, because you do know that the they are rated uh, on tests, right? And the average range of the American population is eighth grade. And, uh, well, that's the average, basically meaning there's a lot below and a lot above. So, therefore, it range, skills can range from first grade all the way up to university. So, what's your actual reading level at, dude? Because if it's not university level, you probably won't be able to understand any of the legal jargon. I think that you're really doing a disservice to yourself by not having an attorney. And this is for your own protection, because... You're not charged with the most serious of crimes, but yet it still is a five-year felony. Do you understand that? Yeah, I understand. Okay. Do you understand that an attorney would be able to do some things on your behalf, like quite possibly get you diversion, to which to which you have you would plead guilty to a short term of probation, and then the case would be dismissed off the record. I understand my rights. I understand the situation that's going on, so if I would represent myself, whatever happens, this is what happens. You understand that if you represent yourself, I got to hold you to the same standard as if you were an attorney. I'm not cutting you any breaks because you don't know the law. That's fine. I understand. So it's your wish to represent yourself. Yeah. All right. Now, I no way, no way mean to insult you in any kind of way. But you have heard of that old saying that anyone who represents himself has a food for a client. It's a lot of truth for it. A lot of truth to that. It's my right to represent myself, and I wish to represent myself. Okay. Are you ready to proceed? Yes, sir. Sure. How many witnesses? Uh, just the one. They call you witnesses. At this time, the people call Officer Badge Five. 
Um, Your Honor, may I ask for uh, a, a mutual fee frustration with the exception of the officer in charge? Uh, All, right. All right, ladies and gentlemen out there in YouTube land, if you are a witness or potential witness of order, you will log off at this time. Sir, please step forward if your name is spelled to the court report. Please raise your right hand, sir. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so be done. Yes, Your Honor, I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat with this box next to me. Voice up nice and loud speaking to that microphone. Yes, sir. You may begin with your right hand. Can you please take your name and application for the record? Officer Nabi Bashbai, police officer with the Detroit Police Department. And how long have you been a police officer? Approximately five years. And were you working in the capacity of a police officer on October 5th, 2023? Yes, ma'am, I was. Okay, and were you working by yourself? No, ma'am, I was working with two partners. What's their name? Officer Ryan Ruloff and Officer Daniel Colebrook. Okay. And on this particular day, were you working in full and modified uniform? I was working in a modified uniform, as you see me in court today. With. Okay. And um, were you on foot patrol or in a scout car? In a scout car. Was that scout car police marked or semi -marked? It was semi marked. Okay. And when a police vehicle was semi marked, what exactly identified that as being a police vehicle? It was present with decals getting the truck police on both sides. However, the light bar is inside the vehicle as opposed to on top. Okay. And did your duties as a police officer take you to 1200 East 7 Mile Road? Yes, ma'am, they did. And is, this, is that in the city of Detroit County of Wayne? Yes, ma'am, it is. And what is that, that location? That is a Valero gas station. Okay. And why were you at that location? We were conducting a routine patrol in the area. Okay. And while you were conducting routine patrol in the area, did you observe anything that caught your attention? I did, yes. What did you observe? As my partner pulled the scout park eastbound through the parking lot of the Valero gas station, I observed the defendant, Mr. Blinding, Walking westbound to the parking lot of the gas station towards our office helper. Okay. And uh, can you please point to an identifier on the book called the person you had identified to observe? That would be Mr. Blanding with the gray t shirt. Your Honor, may the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant? So no. Okay. And uh, upon making this observation, uh, did you observe anything further? I did, yes. What did you observe? As Mr. Blanding was walking to us towards us in Mention Manor, I observed the grip of a handgun. Shooting from his front waistband. Okay. And based on your observations, what, if anything, did you do? At that time, I exited my scout car to further an investigation for possible CCW. Okay. And uh, what did um, what happened next? I made contact with Mr. Blanding in the parking lot. At that time, I asked him if he could present me with a CPL. And did he present you with the CPL? He stated to me that he's open carrying and therefore did not need one. Okay. And... Um, Upon um, receiving that information, what did you do next? I instructed Mr. Blanding to place his hands upon his head in order to safely recover the firearm, which he did. Okay. And why did you um, instruct him to do so? Mr. Blanding had previously informed me that he did not have a CPL, which would be a requirement to carry a firearm in mention manner. Okay. And when you say in mention manner, please explain to the court what you, what you mean by that. The majority of the firearm was concealed within his front waistband. The only exposed part of the firearm was the grip. Okay. And... Um, did he uh, comply with um, putting his hands uh, up and everything? Yes, ma'am, he did. Okay. And did you, did the defendant have a CPO? No, he did not. And did you verify that? Yes, it was verified via lien. Okay. And uh, what did you do with the firearm? I secured the firearm as well as the inside the waistband holster inside my scout cart, pending uh, processing of the prison. Okay. Did you place that on the evidence? I did, yes. No further question. Cross the <laughs> We get to ask questions. Yes. Uh, Step to the podium so we can hear you. Right. I ask you, what was the reason for stopping? What was the reason for stopping? As I stated, I observed you concealing a firearm in the front waistband. You observed me concealing a firearm. You can see the firearm properly, though, from which your eye from the scout car 30 to 40 feet away, right? 
As I mentioned, I could see the grip of the firearm protruding from your waistband. Okay, yes. so how could you consider that concealed if you can see the firearm with your eyes? And that's what the only thing that made you stop me was the vision of my firearm, right? A portion of the firearm. No, all you seen, but why did why else did you stop me? There was no other reason for you to stop me, so that would be considered a terror stop, right? As I mentioned, that was the reason for the investigation, the further weapons offense. Investigation. But there was no, I was not committed a crime. There was nothing that you can say that I was committed a crime or no other reason that you can say that I was doing anything wrong for you to stop. So you had, uh, uh, what would you say? Uh, uh, you you just had uh, a feeling that I didn't have a CCW. So that is the reason why you stopped me. No, sir. I had reason to investigate you and ask you to present your CBL card. But you, what, what was the reason for stopping me? I was not committing a crime. I was walking through the stairs. You can see the gun. You don't know if I have a CP or not. So did, what gives you the right to even stop me in the first place? The question. Because the majority of the firearm was concealed inside your waistband. Once again, you don't know if I have a CP or not, right? So why did you stop me? You don't know if I have a CP or not. I'm not committing a crime. I'm walking down the street. So you have no right to stop me. They question me in the first place. That is a... a, a Sorry, a so violation of my right? Yeah, is that a question or a statement? So you have to ask questions. So, uh, so I was so you can see that I was not committing any crime. So, you can you tell me what was the reason for stopping me besides the sight of my firearm? That's the that's the answer. Okay, so there was no other reason for you to stop me. I don't have any more questions. Okay, can you redirect? No redirect. Thank you, sir. You missed it. Thank you, Your Honor. Any other witnesses? No further witnesses, Your Honor. Sir, do you have any witnesses to call? No, I don't. Your yeah, Honor, at this time, the people who request that the case be bound up, or we do believe that this question of fact for the trial of that could be here from the witness officer that time, he stated, upon um, observing the defendant with um, a group of a handgun protruding from his waistband, he then went and investigated for a possible of carrying a concealed weapon upon which he asked if he had a CPL. The defendant did not present one, uh, at, at which point the officer recovered the uh, handgun and made it safe and also verified via me as to whether he had a, uh, a, a, a license to carry, and which he did not. So we are going to be able to believe that this question of fact required fact based on that. Mr. Terrell and Mr. Landon, Mr. Landon, would you like to Argument as to why the court should not bind it You say what? Would you like to make an argument as to why the court should not bind this matter over? Yes, I would. Go ahead. Because uh, he violated my second amendment rights. I have a right to bear arms. And I was doing nothing wrong. I, I did not commit a crime. He did not have a reason to stop me in the first place. And that would be considered a Terry stop because he didn't have a reason or a right to stop me. I was not committed a crime. So why did he even stop me and approach me? I have a right to bear, to bear arms. My arm was legal. It's registered. So, therefore, why was he even stopping me? That's harassment. He stopped me because he said the black man here with a firearm walking out of the store. There was no other reason in the world he could stop me. The other, the, I don't see no other reason why he could stop me. Like, I was not committing a crime. Usually, you would have to be committing a crime for someone to stop you if you're walking out of the store. Well, the only thing he's seen, he's seen my pistol. He's, I have a right to carry a pistol. That is my second amendment right. So, Okay. All right, stop it. All right, I get what you I get what you're saying, and that's not different than the argument that an attorney would make. You didn't do too bad, especially to not have any formal education in law or college and life. But let me explain something to you. You do have a second amendment, second amendment right to bear arms, but as all of your rights, none of those rights are absolute. States have been made to regulate how and when you can carry a weapon. So in other words, the Tenth Amendment applies here, and uh, states can build up around these uh, uh, amendments as long as they don't violate them. I mean, you can regulate the uh, you know, firearms, you can diminish certain aspects of firearms, but you can't outright ban them because of the Second Amendment granting everybody the right to bear them. And the same concept applies to all of the amendments, not just the Second or First Amendments, but all of the amendments. 
in the state of Michigan, although you can open carry, you cannot carry a concealed weapon. Hold on, let me talk. Let me talk. You cannot carry a concealed weapon on your person without a license to do so. No, sir, please do not interrupt. Let me talk. I'll give you another opportunity, okay? All right. So the officer testified that the weapon was concealed on your person. It wasn't totally concealed in that he could see the hand grip of the weapon. It does not have to be totally concealed in order to be concealed in the state of Michigan. A portion of it, he said that the only part that was visible was the grip of the hand. That would be considered concealed or at least a question of fact as to whether or not you were open carrying or carrying a concealed weapon. The, the, the only thing that I can say that was that would be the problem is I had the empire holster. I wasn't aware of the holster. Your, your holster is an even issue. Yeah. I don't have a problem with you yeah. having having a holster. I don't have a problem with you carrying a gun if you're open carrying. Yeah, open carrying is open. But the reason you see the thing, Your Honor, is that's the only reason he seen it. When I walked out of the gas station, he can see it with full view. How can you that. consider that concealed? Because that's out for him to see. Because a portion of the weapon was concealed. Do you can see that? The portion of it was concealed? You had an inner holster, right? Yes. So with the inner holster, because I carry one myself, with the inner holster. Like a quarter of the gun is concealed and the rest of it is hanging out. Well, I don't know what kind of gun it is, but a quarter of a gun or half the gun, he said that most of the gun was concealed. The majority of the gun was out there. If you can see the video from it, you can see the gun and you can see how much of the gun was hanging out from the video. All right. So you'll be free to argue that even if, it, if this gets to trial that the gun was not concealed. But based on his testimony, his sworn testimony, he said that the majority of the gun was concealed. The only thing that you could see was the handle of the gun, and that's what he observed. Now, possessing the gun on your person gave him reasonable suspicion that you might be carrying the gun without a license. Oh my goodness, there's the dreaded Reasonable, articulable suspicion that uh, you were committing a crime. Oh, man, the judge just laid it down for you. In other words, the officer did have the reasonable suspicion that you may have not had the proper permit for concealed carry. So your RAS argument completely went out the window. Maybe you should hire a good lawyer because... Well, maybe they can get you out of this. It's worth considering. And that's what he acted on. He went in to further investigate whether or not you had a CPL. That was like a hunch, though. That's like he couldn't say that's for sure. That's what reasonable suspicion is. A hunch. And that gives you the reason to stop me. If you don't know how committing a crime, for sure you shouldn't be able to stop reasonable me. Hunch. Hunch. Maybe. Hold on. Reasonable suspicion. You, you mentioned the case Terry versus Ohio. You might want to go read it. Reasonable suspicion means that you have reason to believe that criminal activity might be afoot and that you have you can articulate on the record what that reasonable suspicion is. He saw you with a gun that was somewhat exposed on your person. Based on that, he could come and ask you questions to see if you were carrying that gun legally or not. Based on his testimony, he did so and you were not. So that's where you stand. All right. So the court, after hearing the testimony of the officer, is satisfied that people have met their burden of probable cause as it relates to the charges contained in the complaint warrant. The court finds those charges were committed in the city of Detroit. The court finds probable cause to believe this defendant committed. The defendant will be bound over to Wayne County Third Circuit Court Criminal Division for further proceedings. His arraignment on the information date and time will be February 15, 2024, at 9 o'clock a.m. Bond will be continued. Now, I'll agree with the judge saying that the guy did make a, well, a reasonable attempt and a fairly decent attempt at, uh, well, his argument, but he it still ended up completely falling flat on his face considering he did not consider all options. He had no idea what a, a Terry stop actually was. He just parroted what 
and other frauditors and sovereign citizens thought Terry Stops are. I'm sure he must have listened to Chili de Castro or something like that and was like, hey, I could use that. Uh, but no, he ended up falling flat on his face. So, dude, go get yourself a real lawyer and not Chili de Castro. He's gonna, it's gonna be guaranteed that you'll end up in jail if you have him as your lawyer. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?